a YouTube video around the computer is really awesome. So. I guess I'm just. <laughs> Well, people use the technology as kind of like a mediator. Yeah. And now with Google Plus, they have. Like, yeah. We are. And now we have introduced a camera to like videotape our conversations. Like, yeah. Well, and people, people change when they know that they're yeah. on video or I'm sure, you know, and people kind of craft their persona if they're on mm -hmm. Facebook or yeah, exactly. YouTube. I like, know this like a lot of people. And we change the way it looks like completely, and then we put it on there. Like, okay. Um. Yeah, but I feel like I mean I have a lot of friends too where like they we use YouTube as like a common ground. Like, yeah. And that's like all we have to talk about. Like, do you see that? Do you see the new music video? And like, it does make sense that like we're kind of losing interest from like how was your day? Or yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. Start calling people and 
Yeah. And, instead of just texting. And, uh, yeah, and like through this Getty internship, um, we get a lot of emails for interested applicants, which mm -hmm. is great. You know, it's really uh, useful. But you know, sometimes you get people who are just sliding into that kind of casual. Uh, language, you know, do you, do you use yeah. a smiling yeah. face, you know, <laughs> yeah. when you're trying to get a job, you know, so I think that's just learning to, to know when to, yeah. when Would to it change your perspective on someone if instead of sending an email about being interested, they actually wrote you a letter? Um, like, they took the time to do that, um, you know, can't write it. I don't think I'm that old school, okay. but Anymore, yeah. I might think like, oh, why'd you waste the paper when you could have sent me an email? I think it's just more the form of it, the form okay. of your writing, if you say, you know, dear so-and-so, you know, and your, if your language is formal, I think it works just as well, because okay. you could write a letter and have the letter, letter be yeah. very informal and yeah. inappropriately yeah. informal, yeah. so I, I'm glad that we have all these different forms of communication, but... I think you just have to know when to utilize each. Yeah, you have to yeah. know when to say when. Well, what about it, like instead of someone sending you an email that came in in person, that like, came in the resume, would, would then they have that their edge? Or? Yeah, I think that I think it's uh, always more of kind of an impact to either call somebody on the on the phone or or go in person to meet them if it's you know more of a professional. Yeah. Uh, endeavor that you're in. I mean, okay. that's just people are, I mean, you're going to remember somebody that you heard the sound of their voice yeah. and kind of you get a more sense of them as a person mm -hmm. than if you just write an email. Those are it's really easy to forget, mm. you know, kind of through these technologies. Or, uh, you know, she was kind of talking about that in the video that they can be very forgettable. You know, they're easy, yeah. but they can be short attention spans. So, what are you writing? Well, I'm writing about kind of, uh, I think of video as being an extension of photography and how technology and social media has kind of uh, altered the, the form and the, the purpose of, of uh, video or photography that, um, you know, originally photography was kind of used to uh, capture a person or a moment in time and kind of make that immortalize them yeah. or or a moment you know or you know historical moment or just to to make it last and uh, with facebook or youtube you can, you have an opportunity to use the same uh, format of, of photography or video but you can do it in a way that's very kind of ephemeral or, or fleeting. And yeah. I, I'm an artist and um, I find that kind of exciting, that challenge of yeah. how do you change your mindset of, of what this medium means. Yeah. And, uh, and I understand some people have kind of uh, qualms about it that cause there is something that's lost and things that are impermanent, but I think that's also can be very exciting and, and challenging. 
So, so I've been trying to, be like, hey, we've seen this funny video in some, some aspects of my own work, um, be like, trying to kind of just embrace that, um, you know, that, that impermanence, because that has, that's connected to my work in general, so. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to write about. Nice. It's a classic So, <laughs> explain. Okay. Um, I feel like it's important to not hide yourself behind like social media and stuff because, I mean, you shouldn't be different online than you are in person and you shouldn't be able to talk to someone like you went online, offline, like on the phone and stuff. Yeah. Like different, different personalities? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. Nice. <laughs> the revolution will not be televised. Mass mobilization of minds. Deactivate, dis disengage, unplug, live the real world, drink water, turn off the TV. So the first statement, the revolution will not be televised is from Gil Scott Heron, rest in peace. And so in terms of the way our society is growing through social media, I feel that it's necessary to understand when to turn things off and when to deactivate and disengage in order to have deeper interaction to other human beings. Yes. You know, it's a it's a wonderful tool in order to interact with those we cannot and reach a larger audience like YouTube. So people who are doing creative production can have an outlet for that. But at the same time there's this mass mobilization of this outlet where nobody can really feel individuals anymore. Yeah. That's how I feel. Well, what, what what happened? What happened? There's a smudge. There's a what? Stop it! <laughs> so what are you writing? So I wrote YouTube, sharing is caring. And this should be their motto. And I wrote their motto. Yep, their catchphrase or whatever. Because I really feel like YouTube. I don't think it's disconnecting people. I think it's sort of connected them, but maybe in a weird way. So like I remember a, a lot of my college. Well free time in college, so my friend, one of my friends would be like, hey, have you seen this funny video on YouTube? And everyone would be like, no, so our whole, you know, suite would just go into on someone's laptop and watch the video. And be like, hey, this is funny, and we'd all laugh, and we'd all, you know, it'd be a running joke during dinner, so, if they said something funny or a catchphrase or something like that. So I think that sort of brings people together, so. That's yeah, but like a ground point for everybody to come to? Yeah. Yeah, for everyone to know, you know, this is what's going on. It's not like you have to go see a movie or something. It's free. You can go see it, and you can understand it. And it, you know, I think that's great. Definitely. I put internet, but like, what's a good way of saying like texting or like emailing, like, uh, what, like communication via like technology or like does that make sense? I don't know. Communication through technology. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Amanda, what are you writing? Can you say that loud? I put, we have lost our voice by using communication technology. Not its power, but its sound. And then I'm going to put, it's nice to hear your voice. Oh. You can be the star of this video. It would be cool to put it, like, yeah. to, like, write, like, it's nice to hear your voice. Yeah, I'm excited to see the newspaper. Yeah. Already done. You filmed me, like, five times already. <laughs> Alright, so why do, you, why do you say it's nice to hear your voice, Amanda? Because there's so many friends I've lost by not hearing their voices. It's through a text, through an email, through a blah blah blah. blah like, call me. It's not that hard. Stop! Why aren't you going?